In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I built this reflow plate. So in the past, I had to solder a lot of SMD PCBs and to do that, I use a hot air soldering station. Don't get me wrong, this is a great tool, but sometimes it fries components. So I thought, let's make a reflow plate. Luckily, my mom bought a new iron and gave me the old one so I can use that to build my station. But to start, I had to take it apart. All the dust from over 10 years of use. I want to take this metal shield off and to do that I think I have to cut the rivets under these black rubber dots. It turned out that my theory was right and I can now just pop it open like, like that. Uh, yeah, perfect. So now that I have the heating element of the iron, I can start building the control circuit. To read the temperature, I want to use these NTCs um, that are left over from my 3D printing projects, and they are normally used in extruders for 3D printers. So let's see how they work. So I got the schematics, and now I have to put together the circuit. I use a 100 kilo ohm resistor because I have a 100 kilo ohm NTC. So let's hook it up to the PC and test it. So here I got this code. I stole it from the other food website. You will find the link to this article in the video description. Um, anyways, let's hook the Arduino to the PC. Let's go under the cable. That. So the Arduino is connected here at COM3, Arduino Uno. The Leonardo is always connected. It's from my quick work. Check that video out if you haven't already. But now let's load the code. If you're wondering, I'm using Arduino IDE 2.0. So the code is now uploaded and let's have a look at the serial monitor. Okay, we get realistic measurements. Here I got another temperature sensor, so I put them next to each other my fingers and now we have a look how close the measurements are but that seems pretty good to me now let's check it out in the serial plotter for everyone who likes to have it as a graph here you can go tools and serial plotter and then you get it as this nice graph. I hold on to the NTC and we can see that the graph rises and now I let go and it falls again. So that worked pretty good. Now let's try to add another NTC into this program and have two graphs. So for the second NTC I simply duplicated everything necessary for the first NTC. Uh, like you can see here um, with A1 or here it's average 2. So let's um, build the circuit for that and have a look how it goes. So I need another 100 kilo ohm resistor. The signal wire in here. Unfortunately I don't have another THT 10 microfarad capacitor so that one have to work without. And now let's upload the code to the Arduino and have a look how it goes. Both NTCs should read the same, uh, around the same temperature uh, yeah 
that can't be right. Oh, 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 all right, I see. As you can see here, here's the uh, VCC line and I connected the resistor next to it. So now it's connected, right? Let's have a look. Activate auto scroll and now they both read around the same measurements. Okay, now, now that works. So let's have a look in the serial plotter, how this goes. Um, here normally is the last uh, serial print LN, so it uh, goes to the next line. And this was the same here. But to get actually two graphs, you have to delete it here. So both of the measurements are printed next to each other. And now when I go to the serial plotter, you can see there are two graphs and when I touch one of the NTCs you see one of the graph rises and the other one stays low because I'm only touching one of the NTCs. So next I have to think about how I want to display the data and here I want to use this 2.6, 2.8 TFT LCD shield by Elegoo that just plug onto the Arduino like that. And so let's try it out how it works with the touch screen first. So the LCD is booting up and now um, let's have a look. Okay, i show you that. I can pick the color that seems to work and now I can draw on it. So let's take a pencil with a finer tip. This actually already looks pretty good to me. So I don't have to calibrate the touchscreen at all. Um, that's really helpful. That saves a lot of time. So first things first, I switched from an Arduino Uno to an Arduino Mega because the display uses all the pins on the Arduino Uno and I don't have enough pins left to control and to read temperature sensors. That's why I'm using an Arduino Mega. To control the iron and to read the temperature of the iron, I already programmed a little sketch on the Arduino Mega. So let me show you that real quick. I turn off the light so you can see it better. Here's this little interface I made with a plus and minus button. With the plus button you can increase the temperature, the set temperature down here. That's the temperature um, the iron tries to reach. Uh, at the moment it's set to 1, so it increases by 1 when I press the button. I can switch to 10, so it increases by 10. And I can switch to 100, so it increases by 100. Same backwards. For safety reasons it can't go over 500, so for example here you see it's set to 500 and I try to go higher, it goes back to 500, same backwards. Um, it can't go under 0, so it's 0 and it jumps always back to 0. Here you see the current temperature, it's the average temperature calculated from all the three temperature sensors, which you can see over here. Um, at the moment they read a 100 degrees Celsius, that's just uh, for example to show that they uh, display temperature right here. And here you see the little iron icon I made, um, which is three temperature sensors. On it. So to heat the iron I want to use a solid state relay. This one is rated for 40 amps and it's controlled by the Arduino. This is going to be a P control, so a proportional control, but I will talk about this a bit more um, later on. But to protect it from overheating I found this cooler in the trash with a fan already installed. I 3D printed this little stand so I can screw it onto the base. Now I have to drill and tap holes into the aluminum to screw the relay on. For the base I want to use this solid bamboo board I bought at IKEA for really cheap. So let's first cut that to size. To 
to space the heating element from the base, I have this threaded rod right here, which I have to cut to length. And for this, I use this little Lego piece right here as a guide. So now that I have all the components ready, I can start putting it together. So now let's start with placing all the components and marking. So now that all the important electronics are installed, I can start wiring it. Okay, so ignore my desk, it looks like a mess, but this is the first time testing it. Um, the iron isn't plugged in yet, um, so I just want to have a look if the sensors are measuring correct data and if everything is hooked up correctly and if the fan spins, so... <sighs> Let's go. Okay, the fan is running, I hear it. Um, now I can see the sensors are sensing realistic values. I take one and touch it and we see that temperature rises at the sensors point. Um, and I just put them in holes right here. So the sensor is working too and now this sensor. Okay, all the sensors are working. So let's have a look if I can Nope, the touch function isn't working. All right, so I fixed it. Um, the problem was I rotated the screen because um, in the past the screen faced this way, but now it's facing this way, so I rotated in the code the screen. But the problem is um, that only the graphics Get rotated and not the touch screen so all the um, touch screen coordinates were down here or over here and I now adjust them so you can see that when I hit 100 it turns 100 or 1 or 10 um, yeah and here you see this little uh, LED this LED lights up when um, the relay is triggered and now for example here see the current um, average temperature is 27 degrees celsius so i say 10 and go to 20 and now i um, to 30 and now you can see that the led lights so now I decrease the temperature 29 28 27 then I see 24 degrees it turns off again so I already mentioned that this is a proportional control what means I have my set temperature at 185 degrees Celsius for example and then my error is by 180 and 190 degrees Celsius, so 5 um, degrees higher or lower. And in theory, um, the graph should look like this when the temperature of the iron rises and it reaches to 190, the iron gets turned off, so the temperature drops again. And when it's dropped to 180 degrees, it should rise again, and drop again, and rise again, and drop again, and so on. And so it is actually oscillating around this 185 degrees Celsius I chose from a set point. So, that's the first time testing it for real. Um, here I got the switch for the iron so just in case something goes wrong I can quickly turn it off. In the upper right corner you can see the serial plotter. I also fixed the little temperature sensors with a bit of Kaplan tape to the iron 
and so yeah let's try it out um, for the first test I will set it to 180 degrees Celsius so turn the iron on and let's go to 180 degrees Celsius the red LED lights up and you can see the temperature is rising so let's wait and look how it goes okay so it is over 180 and you see the LED turned off so the iron should cool down now and when it's cooled down enough the LED should turn on again until it's at 180 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're getting closer. At 175 degrees Celsius, um, the LED should turn on, so the iron should be heating again. Yeah, the LED turned right on. You see that. Um, so the iron is heating again. So on this little PCB known from my DIY Arduino Leonardo project, check that out if you haven't already. I put a little bit of solder paste on some of the solder pads right here and now I will put on the little switch here to test my new soldering station and see if it actually can solder PCBs. Alright, so now let's put on the PCB. Yeah. And set the temperature to 190 degrees Celsius. And the answer is yes, my reflow plate can solder PCBs. So I exported all the values from the serial monitor into Excel and made a little graph, which you can see right here. The red line is the set temperature, the gray line is the error for when the iron gets turned on again, and the yellow line is the error for when the iron gets turned off. The blue line is the temperature measured by the Arduino, so it's the iron temperature. And here you can see really good first heating process um, goes really high and then cools down again. And from this point, the graph looks similar to the graph I made on my whiteboard. Um, but all in all, it looks how I expected it to look. It's really nice. Um, and I'm really happy how this turned out. That's it for this video. I think for the first version this looks really good and I'm really happy that it works so well. If you think so too, then feel free to like, share and subscribe. Here are videos, here are my channel. So have a nice day and see you soon.